time, the tech sector continues to be badly beaten down, but investors continue to look for growth areas in the market. Joining us right now is Jared Weisfeld. He's tech sector specialist at Jefferies. And I've heard some pretty convincing arguments, Jared, in recent days that technology was the leadership for a long time, but that now it's really being turned over to, to value stocks and international stocks, that those could be the leaders from here. When you look around the tech sector, what do you think? What, what could be areas that you would tell people to put their money right now? For sure. Good morning, Becky. Listen, I mean, at the, at the end of the day, tech is one of the most economically sensitive sectors that's out there. So, you know, it's down 30 percent year to date. And to your point, you're seeing other areas of leadership emerge within the market. So if you look at even most recently what's happened over the last couple of weeks, you're seeing some of the more cyclically sensitive areas within tech completely break down. Semis, for instance, if you look at the SOX relative to the SPX, we're sitting on fresh lows as there's broader concerns about going into a recession. So we're certainly advocating to, um, from a portfolio strategy standpoint, move away from semis towards more of the growth areas in, in, uh, in the broader market. When you start looking at structural growth and software, we certainly think there are more opportunities in those sectors. Why? Because, because they are more recession-proof? So if you think about what the Fed is doing, it's so important to re-anchor long-term inflation expectations. And if, you can, if the Fed can successfully do that, you're going to see a significant positive development with respect to long-duration assets. The software sector in particular is so susceptible to a rising rate environment. So the more confidence that we're going to have in terms of the Fed re-anchoring long-term inflation expectations, that's a significant positive within the group. And in general, during recessionary times, there's going to be scarcity value with respect to growth. And software certainly is going to outperform more uh, cyclically sensitive sectors such as semis. A lot of companies have invested a lot of money in technology over the last few years as people were working from home. The pandemic really shook things up. Was that pull forward spending? Will those companies not need to spend as much in the, in the coming years, especially if there's a recession? Exactly. And it's such a great point, Becky. If you look at, I think PCs are, are one of the best examples. You know, we were shipping 260 million PCs globally pre-COVID. That ballooned to 340 million post-COVID as we're having multiple PCs per household. We're all working from home. That market's going to decline about 10% this year. So I think that's a great example on how we pulled forward years worth of investments, quite frankly, into six to 12 months. And now we're digesting that. So I think we have to get through that digestion. And uh, from, a, from, a, from a semiconductor standpoint, it becomes a little bit difficult for outperformance when you think about some of these key end markets, which are going to decline so significantly this year. I know you've said that corporate America would still be willing through uncertainty and even potentially through recession to, to spend on things for mission critical. What is mission critical and what stocks does that lead you to? For sure. So going back to the earlier point in terms of structural growth outperformance, looking within areas of software, I think cybersecurity is a great example in terms of areas that can be more recession proof than not. So when you look at stocks like CrowdStrike, you look at stocks like Splunk that are levered to key cybersecurity trends that can benefit during recession. At the end of the day, if you're a Fortune 500, if you're a Fortune 1000 company, what's one area that you're probably not going to cut down on from a, from, a, from a budget standpoint? It's certainly going to be cybersecurity. And think about digital transformation, right? I mean, Bill McDermott at ServiceNow has talked about this uh, multiple times in terms of lowering total cost of ownership. His tools are deflationary in nature, which is why he's actually seeing an uptick in demand right now.